Good afternoon, Namaskar. I, Kriti Vadera, would like to welcome all the teachers, learners, educators, students to CIET and CRT's live phone program. And you are watching us live on PME with their channel number 9. This session is going to be for standard 9 students. Mathematics is the subject which we are going to discuss next 30 minutes for you. And we will be discussing a chapter from your textbook by the name of coordinate geometry. And the expert who is joining us today for this particular discussion, I would like to introduce Mrs. Usha Pillai. She is joining us from Campion School, Bhopal. We welcome you, Ms. Pillai, for today's discussion. Good afternoon. And viewers, uh, before we begin with today's live interaction program, I would like to remind you here that if you have any questions, any kind of queries, then please do let us know. You can dial on our toll free number to tell us. Number would be double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. If you want to watch this program on YouTube, then you may kindly log in to official uh, channel of NCRT by the name of NCRT official. There also in the live chat box, you may send all your suggestions and questions to us. One more medium to contact us, kindly mail all your suggestions and questions to dts.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So these are the various mediums to approach us. Now we shall begin with today's mathematics class on coordinate geometry. I welcome you again, Ms. Pillay. So what all are we going to discuss today in this chapter? Good afternoon, students. In the last class, we studied about coordinate geometry. That introduction part that I am repeating here, that is, we have already learned about a plane surface that is called the Cartesian plane. That is a flat surface that extends all the four sides infinitely. It is called a Cartesian plane. It is divided into four equal parts. Each part is called a quadrant and it is divided by two lines. Horizontal line is called x-axis and vertical line is called y-axis. Now we can see the intersecting point of this x-axis and y-axis called origin, that is coordinates of origin are 0, 0. Now, if we are taking a point from the x-axis, we have already learned on right side of this x-axis positive numbers, left side negative numbers, above the x-axis positive numbers, below the x-axis negative numbers. So we are taking the point together from x-axis and y-axis, it is called coordinate. And here the x-coordinate A is called axis and y-coordinate B is called coordinate. Now, from these basic ideas, we can start with the, the remaining questions. First question is, plot the following points on a graph sheet and verify if they lie on a line. We are already studied uh, plotting of points and the points are collinear or not. Collinear means that lies on a line. The same question in another way we are given. First, we have to plot the points 4, 0 on x axis 4 and y axis 0 means it lies on x axis itself. This point is B, 4, 2, x axis 4, y axis 2. Then C is 4, 6, here it is. And D, 4, 2.5, that is in between 2 and 3, 2.5 lies. So, by joining these points, we can see there is a straight line. Hence, we, we can say these points lies on a straight line. Now, the next is draw the line passing through the points 2, 3 and 3, 2 and find the coordinates of the points which this line meets x axis and y axis. As we already learned how to plot the points and how to join this. For finding the points from x axis and y axis, if the line is not there, first we have to extend them. For that, first we are taking points 3, 2 and 2, 3 from x axis 2, y axis 3, that is 2, 3 and x axis 3 and y axis 2. So we have joined these points and we extend these to x axis and y axis. Then we can say this touches x axis on y, 5, 0 and on y axis 0, 5. So we can say this line intersect x axis on 5 comma 0 and on y axis 0 comma 5. So in this question, we are asked you to find out the area of this triangle. And how can we find half basin, basin to height is the area of a triangle at the length base is 5, height is 5. So we can say half basin to height 
In this way, we can find the area also. Here it is not asked, but I was explaining how to find it. Now, in the next question, plot the points A, 2, 0, B, 5, 0, C, 5, 3. Find the coordinates of point B such that A, B, C, D is a square. Here we are first noting A, 2, 0, B, 5, 0. What is the length on one side? 5 minus 2, that is 3. So, in a square, we know all the sides of a square are equal. So, each length is equal to 3 units. So, third point is 5, 3. That means BC is 3 units. So, we can take the point 3 units away from A. That is 2, 3 will be the last point. Then we get all the sides are of 3 units. Thus, we can say it is a square and all the sides are equal. Now, in the next question, this is an important question. All of you have to understand what is the method for finding this type of questions. We are already learned about the first theorem in seventh class. We had to apply that also. We had to learn about the basic idea of an equilateral triangle, all these things. Now, here the question is, ABC is an equilateral triangle. The coordinates of B and C as B 4,0 and C 4,0. Find the coordinates of vertex A. Here we are given an equilateral triangle. So this point is minus 4, 0 and this is 4, 0. So we can say the distance between B and C is 8 units. On left side 4 units, right side 4 units. So the length of one side of an equilateral triangle is 8 centimeter. So we can say AB equal to AC equal to BC is equal to its units. Now how can we find this vertex? That is we have to find the distance OA. So OC equal to 4 units and this AC is equal to 8 units. So in this triangle AOC we can use Pythagoras theorem as root of 8 square minus 4 square is root of 64 minus 16. That is root 48. We can practice that is 16 into 3. What is the square root of 16? Plus or minus 4. So we can write the answer as plus or minus 4 root 3. So if we are taking this point A here, there is a point here also can occur. So the coordinates of vertex A are 0, 4 root 3 and 0, minus 4 root 3. These are possible vertices of the coordinate a in an equilateral triangle ABC. Now in the next question, we are given in figure LM is a line parallel to the y-axis at a distance of 3 units. We can see the line passing through 3, 0. So what are the coordinates of points P, R and Q? How can we find the points? First we have to see P directly lies from x-axis it is at 3 and on y-axis this point less on y-axis at 2. So the coordinate of P is 3, 2. In the same way we can find the coordinates of R that it lies on x-axis. So a point lies on x-axis we can say the y-coordinate is 0 always. So we can say this point R is 3, 0. Now where Q lies? U is below the x-axis. This point x-axis is 3 and y-axis is minus 3. x-coordinate is 3 and y-coordinate is minus 1. So we can say U is 3, minus 1. Now the second question is, what is the difference between the sum of the points L and M? That is, first we can find out the coordinates of L and M. Here L is here. So from x axis 3 and y axis 4, so we can say L is 3, 4. And on this graph, M is below the x axis, that is 3 from x axis and y axis minus 3. So this point is 3, minus 3. We are already learned about abscissa and coordinate. Abscissa means x coordinate is called abscissa, that is the point from x axis, that is the first one. So, abscissa of L is 3, 
and the practice of m is also 3. So 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. Suppose we are asked to find the difference between the ordinates of L and M. Then 4 minus of minus 3 minus of minus is plus. So we can write 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. In this way we can find the difference between abscissas or ordinates. Now in the next question we are given. Plot the points A, 1 comma minus 3 and B, 5 comma 4. Then draw the line, draw a line segment with these points. Write the coordinates of point on this line segment A. So first part we can do first, plot the points 1 comma minus 3 below the x-axis. Here 1 is from x-axis and minus 3 from y-axis. So we got point A. 1 comma minus 3. Now, 5 comma 4. 5 comma 4 is above this line and we get the point B, 5 comma 4. When we are joining these points, we get a line. When we are extending, it intersect on y-axis also. So, first question is, write the coordinates of a point this line segment AB and in the line segment we can take the point from x axis that is 2.7,0. Now, next is extend the line segment and write the coordinates of point on this line which lies outside the line segment. Outside means AB ke A, C inside tha. that means A or C ki between. So, now outside AB is D. We can take the point from y axis. So this is 0 minus 4.7. In this way, we can find the coordinates of any point we are asked from a given line segment. We can, if this question can ask where this line touches x axis and y axis also, then we can say this line intersect x axis on 2.7,0 or on y axis 0, comma, minus 4.7. Both the questions are same. Only language is changing when we are asking different types of questions. This chapter is too small. So there are very easy questions. And if you are understanding the basic ideas of uh, this chapter, you can get full marks. Now in the next question, plot the following points and write the name of the figure obtained by joining them in order. So first point is P minus T comma 2 from x axis minus 3 and on y axis 2. This point is P minus 3 minus 3 plus 2. Now Q minus 7 minus 3. Both are negative so it lies on the third quadrant. So from x axis it is minus 7 and from y axis it is minus 3. This is the point Q minus 7 minus 3. Then the point R 6 minus 3 plus and minus. That means positive and negative is going less on fourth quadrant. Therefore, we can say this point x axis 6 and y coordinate is minus 3. So, this point lies on the fourth quadrant 6 minus 3 and s is 2, comma 2. Both are positive, so it lies on first quadrant. So, s is 2, comma 2. Now, when we are joining these four points, we can say ps is parallel to qr here when PS is parallel to QR, we can say PQR is a trapezium because the definition of trapezium is if one pair of lines are parallel in a quadrilateral, then we can say it is a trapezium. In this way, we can find out different types of shapes also, different polygons, pentagon, hexagon, quadrilateral, etc. Now the next question is, Plot the following points A, 2, comma, 2 and B, 5, comma, 5. Join these points and check whether the line passes through origin or not. First, we can plot the points A, 2, comma, 2 and then B, 5, comma, 5. When we are joining these points and extending the point, we can see this point passes through the origin O, that is 0, comma, 0. So we can say, this line passes through the origin. Whenever we are given points, we can see this 
both the points are positive so we can say it lies on the first quadrant and then 2,2, 5,5, 3,3, 4,4 all lies in the all lies in the same line and therefore it refers to the original cell so now the next question is up to now we are plotting the points on the graph now without plotting the points indicate the quadrant in which they will lie if first coordinate is 5 and abscissa is minus 3 you know we we are taking first point from the x axis what is this called point from the x axis is called abscissa and point from y axis is called ordinate so first we can write minus 3 and 5 so the coordinate is minus 3 5 now say if minus and plus sign is given which quarter in which quarter it lies we know minus 3 5 lies in the second quadrant we are already learned in each quadrant from 1 2 3 4 first quadrant anti clockwise direction we are counting the quadrants and in the first quadrant positive positive numbers in the second quadrant minus and plus in the third quadrant minus and minus and in the fourth quadrant plus and minus now in the next question abscissa is minus 5 and ordinate is minus 3 so very easily we can write the coordinates the coordinate is minus 5 comma minus 3 and both are negative so we can say the lies in the third quadrant just now we discussed about it next question is abscissa is 5 and the coordinate is minus 3 so the coordinate is 5 comma minus 3 and plus and minus sign is given we know it lies in the fourth quadrant so this point lies on the fourth quadrant in this way we can find out the points lies on which quadrant without plotting the points we can see and we can verify this by plotting the points on a graph but without plotting the points we can write the number of quadrants there are four quadrants you know so now as to some of the questions can be in the form fill in the blanks because now it is uh, MCQ type questions and fill in the blanks and unmarked questions are coming. So you have to understand from this chapter the most important some of the points already we are discussed in the starting and revision of that is given and ordinate of all points on x axis. I already told you a point lies on x axis. The point can be one, uh, x coordinate can be 1, 2, 3, 4, any one of the number. But the ordinate means the y coordinate. What can be the y coordinate? That will be equal to 0. Because any point lies on x, so we can say 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, etc. In the same way, what is the abscissa of the point on y axis? If we are asking this question, what we can write? Abscissa is 0 because a number, a, co a coordinate, a vertex or a point lies on the y axis is always 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, etc. So, in the second part, the point at which the two coordinate axis meet is called. What are the two coordinate axis we are already studied? A horizontal line x axis and the vertical line y axis. What is the intersecting point of these two axes? We have already learned this is the origin and the coordinates of this origin is 0, 0. We are already studying. Now, third question is the point which lies on line y equal to 4x having abscissa 2. Abscissa 2 means what is given in this question? Abscissa means x coordinate. That means x is equal to 2 is given. So, what will be the value of y? First, we have to find that. If x is equal to 2, you can see x is equal to 2, then y is equal to 4 into 2. In place of x, we can substitute the value 2. So, we get the point y as 8. So, the coordinate point is 2,8. In this way, if we are given y is equal to 4x in terms of x or x in terms of y, we can find the values of x or y and write the coordinates. Now, in the next question, 
what is the perpendicular distance of the point P75 from the y axis? So now, if we are plotting this point 7,5, it will lie on the first quadrant. And then we can find the perpendicular distance of the point P75 from the y axis is 7 units and from the x-axis is 5 units. Each question can be termed, termed as x-axis is given, we can write y-axis, then what will be the value? The perpendicular distance of the point is 7, 5 from the y-axis is 7 units. Just like if we are asking the distance from the x-axis, it is 5 units. Now next is point 0, minus 7 lies on its axis. 0 is abscissa. Abscissa is 0, we can say it lies on y-axis, but in the negative part of y-axis, so we can say it lies on the negative y-axis. Now, suppose we are given minus 7, 0. Minus 7, 0. That will lie on x-axis. And we can say that lies on negative x-axis. And suppose the same point is given as 0, 7. Then the point lies on y-axis, but it is positive. So we can say it lies on positive y-axis. And if it is given 7, 0, it lies on x-axis. And we can say it lies on positive x-axis. From the same question, we can change the measures and languages. So the, in the next question, find the coordinates of the point whose axis is minus 5 and the coordinate is 4. Just now we are learned how to write the points minus 5, 4. Now the second one is whose coordinate is minus 7 and it lies on y-axis. If it lies on y-axis, just now we learned 0 will be the x-coordinate. So we can say 0, minus 7. Third question is whose abscissa is 1 and it lies on x-axis. So abscissa is 1 means first point is 1 and it lies on x-axis. So y equal to 0. So the coordinate is 1, comma, 0. Now the last part is whose abscissa equals the ordinate and whose distance from y-axis is 3 units in the positive direction of x-axis. Abscissa equals the ordinate whose distance from y-axis is 3 units and in the positive direction of x-axis. So it is 3,6. Now, from the figure, we can understand right, uh, the point, uh, right points whose abscissa is 0. So we are given so many points in, in this question. I can ask so many questions from this. So first question given is, if we are given the abscissa is 0, what are the points given here? If abscissa is 0 means first point is 0. So, where it lies? If we have A is here. Now, zero, abscissa is 0 means first point X axis 0 is given, 0, 3. And here, the point L is 0, minus 4. So these two points have abscissa as zero. Now we are given the second question as ordinate is zero. Ordinate is zero means y coordinate is zero. Where these points lies. Mrs. You can Kale, see here. here. Uh, with the, this question, I would like to remind you that we are entering into the last two minutes of today's live interaction session. You may please sum up your presentation. Yes. So here the y coordinate is given as zero. So these two points, here we can see i minus 2 comma 0 and g 5 comma 0. In both cases, we can say ordinate point that is the point from the y-axis is 0. Now here, now abscissa is minus 5. Here we are only given abscissa is minus 5 means x coordinate is minus 5. How to understand which points have abscissa as minus 5? So we have to move on to the 
by n minus pi. Here we have d is minus pi comma one and h minus pi comma minus three. So these two points has an axis of minus pi. And now the ordinate is four. Ordinate is four means if we have to move through y axis and these two points that is y coordinate is four, then which are the points given here? That is minus six comma four and four comma four. That is J and B are the points which are ordinate as four. Now from this question, we can have so many questions we can make. That is, here we are given. If we are given the point minus three comma five, which point we show this point? That is P. Now if we are asked three comma three is which point? Which coordinate? Which point? That is C. Now five comma zero lies on x axis. Here zero comma zero lies on x axis. Minus two comma zero lies on x axis. Just like we can say. On y axis, zero comma three that is A, origin zero comma zero, and this point zero comma minus four lies on y axis. Here, if we are already learned a point which lies on both the axes is origin itself that is zero comma zero. So, as a conclusion, we can study this is a Cartesian plane given here. It is divided into four parts. Each part is called a quadrant, and Quadrants are in the anticlockwise direction. It is divided by a horizontal line called x-axis, right. vertical line called y-axis, and the intersecting point is called origin. Zero comma zero is the uh, coordinates of this origin. And also we can say if we are taking a point from x-axis and y-axis together, for example, two comma right. one. The x coordinate is called abscissa and y coordinate is called one. So revise this chapter and if you have any doubts, you can ask at any time in the personal number. So, so Ms. Pillai, that was the last question we discussed? Yes, yes. Okay, so this was the last example we used and of course this uh, chapter must be quite a long as uh, um, we will be discussing it in further sessions I guess Ms. Pillai. Yes. Uh, of course, viewers, we will be taking up on uh, next follow-up sessions for this uh, uh, chapter to be discussed. And um, I would like to thank you, Mrs. Pillay, for joining us today for this particular session today. Thank you. And viewers, here I would uh, like to request you to remain connected to PME with you because in the next webinar, we will be discussing about cyber safety. So remain connected to listen about cyber safety fr uh, from us, from one of our experts and uh, remain connected. We are coming back just in a short while. Thank you.